Hello, everybody. Welcome to season two of What Has Changed Your Life. Today, I'm very honored and privileged to have Robert J. Moore as my first guest of season two. I'm really excited about season two. We have a lot of guests coming, and I really hope that it's going to be, it'll be amazing. I know it'll be amazing. So Robert is an author. He is a motivational speaker. He owns a publish com publishing company, Magnetic Entrepreneur. He mentors people like myself. He's been my mentor. And he's published many, many books. Guinness Book World Record Holder. And the list goes on and on. And I'm sure he's going to tell me all about it. So, everybody, season two, Robert J. Moore. <laughs> Woo! I love it. Welcome. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Robert, for joining me and being hey, my no guest worries. on season two. I'm so happy. I'm, uh, I'm actually pretty excited uh, to be here because uh, I've been watching your growth. Um, we worked together for a while and uh, coaching you and, and 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 the direction you took was a better path. You know, yeah, you're actually doing a lot better now with the things you're doing. It and I'm very impressed. I'm Aww. very impressed. Oh, thanks. <laughs> So well, I, mean, I had somebody I had somebody pushing me in the right direction going, hey. Well, I mean, I, I gave suggestions and, and kind of maybe some hard knocks at times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but that's what sometimes we need, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So your story, before. your story didn't start here. No. Your no. story, because let's be honest, hard work pays off eventually. But you came from a place where you were literally eating out of dumpsters. I was, I, I was. Seven years and, on the street, seven years. And wow. that, was, that wasn't, I won't say it was my own fault, but mm -hmm. I mean, social conformity actually, actually helped quite a bit of it too. Cause social conformity is just basically, for those who don't know what social conformity is, it's the community sitting there saying no together or yes together or agreeing on something as a policy together you know, mm -hmm. or a rule. Um, so basically what happened was they see me as someone that was, should have been probably locked up and kept away and throwing away the key at the time because of my attitude, yeah. my behavior. And I was a drug addict, alcoholic, and I did anything for it. I was held hostage by the drugs and alcohol. Yeah. And that's addiction, right? Yeah. yeah I, I just became yeah. 16 years clean and sober the other day on the 7th. <laughs> Yay. So, that's awesome so i mean i look back how old were you that. what's that sorry i look back at that and i, I just i shake my head because I, yeah. I don't i know i was that person but I, I i would never change a thing in the world i'll tell you that right now but the thing yeah. is i know i was that person and even all the stuff i'm going to say here it's all it's all proof it's it's all tangible it's all proof it's all real it's uh, there's no joking about it. I mean, I, I don't have to make up a story. I have stories. Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah. So. so tell me how you, how old were you when you started using drugs and alcohol? I was just about 13 years old and I was drinking the old stubbies, uh, OV. And uh, I think it was either the black blue or Molson Canadian or something or, or fit. Oh, I was 50. It was, it was 50. Yeah. 50. Yeah, That's it, like it, oil. It, you know, it, was, it was like sandpaper, the OV was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but they were little stubbies, they eh? the little ones there. But then yes. my dad was always having a party on the weekend, having a barbecue, and people come over, um, just family kind of thing. And he wouldn't let anybody else over, but just family and a couple friends. So I mean, I go downstairs and I I guzzle one down. I felt like depressed. I felt like I didn't belong in this house. Mm -hmm. When I guzzle one down on the way up, I let that big belch go, and it's like right mm -hmm. after that belch, I felt like, wow, hey, I could speak now. I, I'm invincible. It's like when people put on sunglasses. Oh, nobody can see me now. To, to, to cover mm -hmm. up the soul to the uh, cover up your soul because eyes to the soul, right? Yeah, it's almost it's like liquid courage, right? All of a sudden, you you oh, down it. it. <laughs> It allowed, yeah. it allowed me to do things, say things, and stuff I probably wouldn't do or say now. Yeah. And then once you had that gateway of alcohol, it became that became a regular thing. Yeah, I become a hostage of it. I, I like calling yeah. it a hostage because um, 
when I tried getting away, it, mm-hmm. it uh, was very, very difficult. It took me a lot of years. I mean, I was, you figure, 13 years old, and I was still going to school. I was getting kicked out of school. I got, you know, when I was 16 mm-hmm. years old, I ran away from home. Actually, I was 15 and a half. Um, wow. I ran away from home. I was sleeping in tents, lived on the streets for seven years. And I, when I say living on the streets, I do not mean someone else's couch. I mean living on the streets. Living I on the break, streets. I break into an apartment building that someone's doing laundry, all because it's the warmth. You get the warm stuff, right? Didn't matter yeah. if it fit, I'd stretch it to make it fit just to get that warmth. And then I pull, I pull all the snow on top of me to keep warm for insulation. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing that you able, that you survived. You know, I get out there in minus 20, 30, 40 now, and it's like, oh, how did I ever do it back then? <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. was in different mode, different. Uh, I was in survival mode back then. Yeah. And do you think that um, with the alcohol, the start of the alcohol with your troubled childhood, was that numbing pain for you? Oh, yeah, very much. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, when I become clean and sober, everything mm-hmm. started flying out. It was like, so I had to basically relive those emotions, but we had to tear them all apart in order to rebuild those emotions. And I had a good Absolutely. counselor. I had, a, I had a very good counselor at the time. He he said he was a bit nervous. He goes, sometimes I'd slam the door and he thought the door was just going to come right off. I had done it so hard. I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. but it's, it's part of reliving it. I mean, you never know what the person's feeling unless you talk to the person or whatever it may be. Yeah. So tell me what your rock bottom was that that decide you decided enough is enough. I need to get clean. I need to get off drugs. I need to get out of you know off alcohol, or I'm going to die here. So tell me what your rock bottom was. And before you do, uh, Audrey says congratulations, Robert. Thank you. Hi, September, Audrey. Thanks for watching. Fifth, no, September seventh, two thousand and five, was mm-hmm. my last drink. And I was in the bush, and nobody wanted to be around me. I was one angry son of a gun. And I wasn't angry at everybody else, but I was angry at myself. Just took it out on everybody else. Yeah. So, I mean, I was I was a really angry person and tried, tried to figure out why. I couldn't figure out why. So, just I, I, I just had enough that day. I mean, I was a hit emotional bottom. I scraped across mm-hmm. that bottom for years, though. And I was going in and out of detox for years. i go in yeah. for a week. i get get myself cleaned up. I mean, you being a nurse, you can understand. You go through the DTs. You have to go in the hospital to get the volume. And then from there, so you don't come off and die. Because it hits your central nervous system. It just it goes crazy. And you're yeah. throwing up all yeah. week at the same time with the dry heaves and everything. Yeah. And it's, it was an awful way to go. But then they allow you to have the food, as much food as you want in those detoxes. And it gives you, it rejuvenates you again. So after a week, it's like, oh, I could do this, no problem again. So you go mm-hmm. back out for another month or two, and it's you're back in for another week. So yeah. when I went back in this time, they said, what makes us think that you're going to not come back again? Yeah. And Yeah. I mean, crying wolf, I, I, basically, I just said to them, I said, this time I need it. I want it. Yeah. And nobody believed me. Yeah. Nobody believed me. <laughs> Well, I, the sad part is, and I hate to say this, but usually with people with addiction is, you know, we have a saying in medicine, if they tell you one thing, you always take it with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Because like, for example, if they say to me, if I say to them, how much alcohol do you drink? And they say two, you know, two cases, a beer a month. Well, I'm, double it. I'm doing a case of beer a day. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, you know what I mean? you just double it automatically you double it because you know people doing marijuana hardcore drugs drinking whatever whatever the person says you double it mm-hmm. because they're not truthful unfortunately not truthful and so that you know is where the trepidation comes from it's so true unfortunately. yeah so tell me what made that moment different though it's just the way I was feeling. Emotional bottom. Um, I got tired of not being wanted around. I got tired of being angry. I got tired of just the way I was living. You know, mm-hmm. it's um, living in a uh, staying in a bush. Uh, I was sitting on a case of beer. I was rolling rolling cigarettes from the ground. I couldn't afford cigarettes, but I could afford a case of beer. You know, 
Uh, yeah. I mean, I bum all day. I, I, you know, bum these people all day and ask them for spare change. And but I was always dressed nice. And I always gave excuses. I used some weird accent at times, and it, it was just a scam. It was just a scam to feed the addiction. That was all it was. Yeah, because that becomes priority, right? Feeding the addiction becomes the priority. Yeah. Big time. And I'd have a bag of clothes I'd always bury somewhere, but I was always dressed nice. I'd go to the uh, go station and, and wash up all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and I was great when they had the power outage uh, in the hospitals um, in 2004 or so. Yes. Because yeah. it, it, I just got out of the hospital. It was actually nice and red because I was stabbed. Um, and I had 44 staples. So I used that as oh. an excuse. And I just grabbed a bracelet out of the garbage and put it around made it look good. Now, my name yeah. was Billy or Joe or whatever name it was on it, but <laughs> they, it, it it told people that I came from Toronto because Toronto had the, the outage in it, and then they I was in Brantford at the time. Right. Or Brampton or something like that. I think it was Brampton, pardon me. So then mm -hmm. when they when they said, uh, okay, well, I have to get back there, I said, you know, I need to get back to Peterborough to pick up my wallet. They never shipped my stuff. And, you know, it was perfect kind of BS. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a perfect they, story. Yeah, so they gave you yeah. 40, 50 bucks to get back at times, and or some people get you a hotel room, some pizza, yeah. you know. <laughs> now so I'm trying, I try to pay it forward now with a lot of different things I do. Yeah. Now, do you find for people with addiction, when they come out and they go to like a sober house afterwards, and then you're kind of released to the world, do you find that there's enough support in the communities for people so that they don't relapse? It depends on what you mean by support, because there is Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, Cocaine Anonymous, there's Straight Out Forward Anonymous, whatever you want. I mean, Eating Disorder Anonymous, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what you are into. Um, I went from living in, in a, a rehab center into a regular rooming house. I couldn't afford mm -hmm. it, but I, I I went on welfare at the time to do it, and mm -hmm. I was seeing a, a seeing a counselor at the time, and that's when I had no education at this time. I was just yeah. starting education, do my grade twelve, and once I started the education process, started getting addicted to that, then I got mm -hmm. to the education afterwards. I mean, for those who are watching that don't know me, uh, I am a five time international best selling author, today, Guinness World Record holder. I have my social service work at the Palma, my addictions degree. My BA in psychology, my master's in counseling psychology, harm reduction, mental health crisis, and I have two honorary doctorate degrees, and I'm one of the top publishers around right now. <laughs> Yay. That's awesome. That's so inspirational because sometimes people who are battling, you know, the demons that they have don't feel like there's anywhere for them to go. So to hear your story and hear where you came from and how you got to where you are today is so inspiring for them that can help someone, you know, who might be struggling right now with staying clean. And they can say, well, he did it. Maybe I can. I do want to mention, I do want to mention when people talk about AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, mm -hmm. I just want to go briefly on, be, on, on, on behalf of the AA itself, not the people, just the AA. Uh, yeah. To be honest with you, a lot of people go there and mm -hmm. they don't want to do the program. So they yeah. go back out. This is the reason why they say keep it anonymous. It's yeah. not that the not that the program should be kept anonymous. It's the people in it, right, should be yeah. kept anonymous. And the reason for that is because if you go out there, say hypothetically I go get drunk and I go into AA and next thing you know I, I start doing the program or I don't do the program, become a dry drunk, and then all mm -hmm. of a two weeks later, I'm back drinking. Oh, I went to AA. It didn't work. Well, now people yeah. are, are criticizing the fact AA don't work because they didn't yeah. do the program. So that's why they say keep it anonymous. But if you actually look at the program, the structure of the program, it worked. Mm -hmm. It, it actually works. worked for me. I did it for five years straight. I, I, yep. I started speaking in different areas. And then I become a counselor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, And then I become a therapist. And, mm -hmm. and I was doing that for like 15 years. So I really didn't go to a lot of meetings afterwards, but I did start speaking all over the world on different things and switched yeah. my career into empowering other people. I utilize all those skills. That's why you don't see doctor in front of my name or all the credentials behind me. It's because I, I want people to believe in me authentically. Yeah. Me. 
right? Yeah. I don't want them believing, oh, this guy's a doctor, go with him. He's, yeah. he's got the education. They'll find all that out later, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you want to be approachable. Yeah. And sometimes all of that is intimidating. It's like when I right? tell people I'm a five time international best selling author, they're okay with the five. Now, if I told them it was really 85 or 90 that I, I'm a bestseller at, I mean, they're going to say, well, yeah. we don't really want to go to him because it's not achievable. Yeah. Right? If it was achievable, yeah. it'd be there. So that's why I keep it as five time international. Nice. Well, again, it's all about being approachable, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So you went to school, became a therapist, addiction counselor. You did that for 15 years. And then what made you go into publishing? Because they're not the same, even in the same arena. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, it's like, therapist yeah. publishing. <laughs> I can honestly say 2005, I, I, I started writing my own book. It was a dream of mine to write a book. Yeah. Um, yep. I did the book. It took me two and a half years. I had all these editors on it. And it was, it was quite interesting that I had people do the cover for me. And I put it out yeah. there. And at that time, I can honestly say, I did it very raw. It was very raw. Mm. The words in it were very raw too. You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, when I became a Christian, that uh, they actually looked at the book at, at the church and said, "Yeah, we're not putting this on our shelf." <laughs> That's too <laughs> harsh for them. <laughs> it was kind of too raw for them, you know, to say. It yeah. was kind of a trucker's mouth. But I had to say it that way. It was like I had to get it off my chest, and that's just the way I was. Right. So and that's I, your story I, too. Yeah, it had a lot of my story. I mean, so yeah. So then I did another book. Um, I think the second one was uh, my my addiction through my journey through addiction or something to salvation mm -hmm. or something. I can't remember. I mean, I, I've done over a hundred books now, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of hard to keep it, track. It, it is. You know, it's <laughs> it's interesting. It's fun though. I mean, I I got I got a brand new book coming out. It's really exciting. You know, it's what's uh, it called? Well, the newest one that's coming out, mm -hmm. I don't even know if I want to tell you. <gasps> I don't even know. This one, <laughs> this is like a really big one, too. This is an exclusive, people. <laughs> well, I'll say it. I'll say it. And I'll say the people that are involved in it, too. We're working yeah. on the date to release it. Okay. okay. It's going to be uh, myself and one of my yep. students. Um, it's uh, Everybody here knows Les Brown, I would imagine. Right, the top motivational speaker in the world, a legendary speaker. Uh, he's doing the forward. And the thing nice. is, his daughter, his daughter, Serena Brown Travis, which happened, I, I was coaching. Uh, yes. Her and I are writing the book together. And that's awesome. This, this is actually the book right here God's Blessing. God's Blessing from Back of the Room to Top Stages Throughout the World. Wow. Two shy people. That's amazing. Two shy people well, at the back of the room. <laughs> yeah. Like how do you how do you get the to get on stage and to speak in front of so many people and tell your story? I mean, it's amazing. Like how do you how do you find that place to get up there and and not be so nervous like how do you put all that together i remember to the first that? time i was asked to speak i was actually at an aa convention believe it or not and mm -hmm. this guy come up to me and says robert he says uh we're missing some one of our speakers uh and, and can you help me for a minute and i thought maybe he was asking me to move some boxes i'm a big guy and yeah no problem i'll help you move some boxes where do you want to move to i get up on stage with him and he goes i don't think you understand what i'm asking and yeah, I, I was only three months clean and sober then. I I wasn't very clear on what I'm thinking. Anyways, he says right. my speaker's not coming. He says I need a speaker, and I said, Well, how long do you want yeah. want someone to speak for? I said, There's some perfect people around. He goes, But I'm asking you. He says, I'm asking <laughs> you. Hello. Right, and I finally got up. Knock knock. Uh, <laughs> so and then I said yes. I said what time? He said, Well, it's going to be in about an hour and a half. I only seen about 25 people in the room. I said, yeah, that's not that bad. By the time yeah. I spoke, there was 250 people there. <laughs> mm. And it was like, that my, must knees, have been my, scary. Knees, my knees are like this. And I, I just basically, you know what? I was scattered. It was my first time speaking. I was scattered. I talked about this, 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 and kind of didn't really make any sense out of it. But mm. they encouraged me. 
they encouraged me to do, you know, keep moving forward. And then and it was really well done. They could relate to it. So could relate to that. You know, it was kind of nice. So then I was in, in, in school up in Arroyo. Yeah. And uh, one of the ladies come in. She was a trustee. And she was spoke. She was speaking there that day. And man, I'm telling you, it was awfully boring. It was yeah. extremely boring. I didn't care what's going on with the trustee stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'll be honest with you. I, I wanted to show the respect to the lady because it, I, you could tell everybody else was not paying attention and it was just overly boring. I went yeah. up to her afterwards and I and I shook her hand. I said, listen, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, I, yeah. said, I said, uh, it's not something I was interested in, but I'll be honest with you. I appreciate the time. She goes, Robert, can I talk to you about some stuff? She goes, I actually heard about you and, and I didn't know she knew anything about me because I was doing a lot yeah. of volunteer work back then. You know, yeah. telehealth, telehealth and a bunch of things up in Aurelia, right? So right. she heard about me and one of her family members were actually struggling with addiction. And, and she says, can you help me with this? And mm -hmm. I said, well, I'm register as a counselor. She goes, yeah, just, just as a friend. Yeah. Said, okay, no problem. That's fine. And I did so. And then she ended up, because she was with the school board, ended up getting me on all the stages in, in schools. And I spoke to awesome. all the schools up there, and then she looks at me and she goes, why aren't you charging these people? Yeah. I knew nothing about, oh, I thought just speaking, you just get up and speak. I didn't know nothing about you get paid for it, right? Yeah. And then she yeah. said, well, you do realize they have a big budget for this. I said, big? <laughs> How <laughs> like, big? <laughs> well, she ended up, been, ended up, I ended up getting like $1,500 for an hour. Wow. Yeah. $1,500 for an hour. And I said, boy, I could do this all day long. Yeah. So then I went to another school. She said she would actually pick me up too. I wasn't driving then either. She would pick yeah. me up and she'd look at me and she would sit there and say, um, "Well, I don't like what your shirt. I mean, let's go buy you a new shirt." And I, yeah. I said, "I don't like your car, but I'm not. I'm not going to buy you a new one." <laughs> and she was warning me like my car. It's a BMW, and I said, "It's a bucket of bolts." <laughs> <laughs> she just shook her, head, shook her head and you know today we're still really really good friends um bless yeah. her husband's soul i mean he just died the other day her husband mm. did so uh yeah she, she still talks to me to help her through things and whatever it may be i mean uh we we all have that situation happen but you mm. know she did she helped me on my uh on my road of success and got me out there oh. speaking and just i've never had a website i'll be honest i've never had a website mm -hmm. i've never had a business card it's all been word yeah. of mouth. With me. Word of mouth. You well, know? that's how I found you yeah. was word of mouth from Della yeah. and who I knew in my community. And she's like, oh, I'm going to hook you up with Robert. I'm like, who the hell's Robert? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and the I mean, rest is history. <laughs> it, it definitely, uh, it definitely is interesting. Marianne's watching and she says, congratulations. That's a great book. Thank you, Marianne, for joining us today on What Has Changed Your Life. Yeah, Marianne's one of my uh, high-end students. Yes. she's, And uh, I actually uh, wrote a chapter for one of her books that's right. not that long ago myself. Which book was it? Which book was it you did it in? Um, it was about the why. Okay. Finding your why. Because the one the one main book that she just she did, um, mm. I, see, I, I don't know if many people know, but I just got accepted with uh, Ingram. Ingram and I partnered up, and, and I'm in one of their top programs. Now, yeah. if you don't know who Ingram is, Ingram's the top distribution center in the whole world. Mm. You have to go through them. Like, if you go through Amazon and publish a book, they actually yeah. send you across to Ingram, and, yeah. and it actually gets distributed. People don't know that. So, uh, simply put, uh, I'm working directly with them now, and I and I upload books right into them, and they distribute it right on shelves and, and everything. So, I mean, I have that opportunity to do different packages and, and help people out. So it's quite unique. It's quite interesting. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. That's a yeah. huge accomplishment. That's huge. That is absolutely huge. I've been asked, I mean, uh, so many different magazines and speaker spots. And I just spoke the other day on that. Uh, uh, suicide and those around us and mm -hmm. keep an eye on it. And I spoke, it was, it was really nice uh, to be able to be recognized and, and that's with out of the website and everything. So once things yeah. get going and that, I think I am going to do a website because I have been asked to do my own TV show. Uh, mm -hmm. Two years, it will be sponsored. But the bigger part of it is in two years from now, I'm, I'm just putting a, I'm leaking you guys out some information that's going to be very valuable. More exclusive. <laughs> yeah, this, this is fun. 
this is going to be breaking news when it hits too. Yeah. So in two years from now, maybe even shorter in two years, um, I'm putting together a huge event, one of the biggest events I've ever done. And wow. Yeah, yeah. And I'm talking about getting two day run on this. I'm going to have an MC doing it. And I'll be honest with you, it's going to be huge. I'm going to have some of the top people in the world. I mean, the top people in the world speaking on the stage. And yeah. I'm going to fill the room. It's probably going to be in Las Vegas or something of the sort. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'll fill the room. We'll have our have our space right then and there to speak and, and, and uh, do our two-day event. But I have the vi videographer there at the time. And they're mm -hmm. going to be actually putting it all together. And we're going to be setting it up as a, a pay-per-view. That's and, pretty and, cool. And a certain percentage will actually go to charity. So. Awesome. A, lot of, a lot of people like I've held, I've hosted a lot of big events and yes. I fill the rooms. Yeah. And you've done a lot of good work and giving back to the community yeah, as yeah. well, for sure. I have. Uh, Feed a Ford is one of the biggest ones I, I, I do. Feed a Ford is uh, Chef Jagger Gordon out of Toronto. He, he yes. he's, uh, come up with uh, the very first one in Canada to mm -hmm. uh, pay what you can or just pay. If, if you can't pay, just take what you can. You know what I mean? So and so tell us a little bit about the program. Is it is it creating food for people that are yeah, so, so they Metro, don't go hungry? All the grocery stores, Walmart, Metro, CN Tower, whatever went was shut down because of COVID. Yeah. He grabs all the food that's possible. Some of the stuff you see lettuce, maybe it's just browning on the outside. So he'd take the browning off, he can get rid of that. But yeah. before the rest hit the landfill, he actually uses it and utilizes all the stuff that's in it and makes nutritious meals. For people, so he'll freeze them, and you'll he did for all the schools and the students around. He started off small, and he's he's doing millions of people right now. He also has an app oh. right now, Feed It Forward app. If you're say you're no matter you are in the world, so say you're in Mexico, and mm -hmm. uh, you have the app, and maybe someone in Mexico is starving and wants that meal, and you put on that app, and you say, "Listen, here's a picture of the, the meal. If anybody wants it, please drop by." So they yeah. come by and they pick up that meal and enjoy themselves. So, so instead of throwing it out, right? Yeah. Thank you, Marianne. I appreciate your support of our little show here. And Marianne also says, congratulations on Ingram. And thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, she was the very first book I actually put up her book. <laughs> That's awesome. So That is a fantastic charity. A fantastic is. charity to be a part of. And I know a lot of your books the proceeds of the books go to those charities, mm -hmm. which is amazing, which is I'm, awesome. I'm actually, I never thought of it before until recently. Um, mm -hmm. Mine's, I do a lot of nonprofit stuff, mm -hmm. uh, like the stuff that goes online and, and nonprofit. So what I did was I put together, um, instead of going nonprofit, I want to do it as a charity register as a charity so I can give uh, income tax, uh, you know, receipts and that for it. Yeah. So I, I put that in the mail the other day. And then once that goes through, it's not just going to be for feed it forward. It's going to mm -hmm. be for homeless people that I see around too. So, you know, like 80% will go towards the people sleeping on the street. So here, there's two different ways I'm looking at it. Yeah. My wife, my wife will go out and buy blankets, socks, deodorant, and, and you know, essentials like that. to right. keep people warm or whatever it may be, right? Or maybe boots or whatever. So, but also, if we have the money and it and it really goes well, if welfare is not actually doing last month's rent or first month's rent, one they'll do one or the other now. Not like the mm -hmm. back in the day used to give you first and last. Well, everybody wants first and last up front. They do. So if they get a room and they can't afford it because they can't get the last month's rent. I'm thinking, well, as long as the money goes well and everything's going, you know, with the charity, I will mm -hmm. pay that last month or first month for them as long as they come up with the other half. Wow, just That's to get amazing. them in that place and get them get them started, you know, and, yeah. and it'll be a, it'll be a all charity, but it'll be registered. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's so generous. Well, I've been That's there. amazing. That's yeah, amazing. been there. Um, yeah. I know the tough times, and I know the emotions they go through, and I know the things they have to sacrifice to be there. I mean, you know, the, the name calling, the the ignorance, um, yeah, and. It's rough. It's rough. Yeah. Do you think that the government should be putting more monies into helping people that are living on the streets? You don't want to get me on politics. <laughs> well, there's an election. <laughs> you don't want to get me on politics. Let's I'll, let's just say I won't talk about anything that 
should be happening yeah. because what I see is something totally different. Yeah. I hear you. I understand what you're saying. No, so I mean, you, me you, you are actually doing that thing. Should you even have, should it, you know, the election be canceled before a member or long weekend be canceled before because of the way the politics was. Yeah. You know, so. True enough. True enough. So tell me, what is your why for why you do what you do? First of all, I don't want to live the way I was before. Yeah. That was, I'll never be there again. I never will. Mm -hmm. I, I can guarantee it day by day. But my why is right, right in my house over here. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I'm in the backyard. I, I built my own office in the backyard. Um, but my wife's in the house, my, my wife and kids. And, you know, was my father when he was alive. I, I helped him out, retired him. I was lucky enough to do that. Yeah. And, uh, but also at the same time is, is to help people. You know, mm -hmm. when, I, when I sit there and see someone smile because I understood it. I remember the yeah. first time I was working with you and you were so focused on the totally the opposite way of doing things that it wasn't working for you. Yeah. So I started giving you nippets and nippets and, and showing you different ways of doing things. Yeah. And then you start smiling, you start understanding, you start gathering more information, you start working. It, it was, it was just tunnel vision. That's all it was. Yeah. You know, and then, and being blocked a little bit too, because yeah. you know, you all think this is the way competition. I had competition. You know, I'll be honest with you. Uh, one of the higher end publishers closed down. Basically, they're very much slow now. Um, mm. they're, and I'm not. <laughs> I know. I don't know how you have the time in the day to do all the things that you do. It's amazing. Yeah, I know. I do a lot. I mean, I well, I see sometimes a business runs itself, right? Yeah, true enough. I, I've done exceptionally well that I can let the business run itself and the coaching, I, I, I do coaching with uh, people. I do, you know, we do editing, we do everything with a book. I got a program coming up on October 2nd in Mississauga. Now, mm -hmm. the, is, the program is not just for people that are going to show up because a lot of people can't show up. So yeah. all over the world, all over the world, if you want to join the program, the program, I'll tell you what it is, the yeah. whole program, it could be online or offline. As long as you pay the money, I don't care if you're mm -hmm. in 10 years or five years or two years, it take, it take forever. It don't matter. Right. As long as you have that space and that's, and they get the bonuses with it. I'm not going to tell you the bonuses until you pay. But here's the thing. You get a whole book to yourself. You get your book written for $1,500. Simple. $1,500, yeah. no tax, just $1,500 Canadian. And we'll do the cover for you. We'll do, we'll do the interior, exterior. We'll do everything for you. Wow. You know, so if we, you're ever thinking of writing a book, people out there. That's to October. Oh, I should go this way. <laughs> that's, that's to October 2nd. And then that yeah. deal will never be seen again. No. I'll never that's do amazing. That. Yeah, I'll never do that again. But I'm, I'm trying to bless the people because of COVID. I understand people are rough. I understand people are having a hard time. And, and I have three different ways you could pay. I can pay the $1,500. i am not mm -hmm. charged. I'm waiving the other fees on top of it for the normally what I would charge for the paperwork to do the, you know, the differences you mm -hmm. can pay, you could pay in three installments or two installments or one installment. Mm -hmm. Right. That's awesome. And, and you have to pay it off before your book gets published. That's all. And how, so where would people go to find this information about that date? Well, you could actually get a hold of me on Facebook alone, uh, Robert J. Moore, or you can go magnetic entrepreneur Inc. can get a hold of me, or you can go on Eventbrite. Eventbrite will actually uh, be there, and it, it'll it'll rock and roll. So I I'll put it up here if you want. I'll I'll put it right yeah. here if you want. Put it in there. Put it in there. Definitely, because somebody out there for sure is wanting to write a book, and I, this I mean, is get, the best way to do it. Thing. I train them how yeah. to do the whole thing. I don't now remember when you write a book, it's not about getting rich. No. All right. Seriously, it's not about getting rich. Let me explain yeah. something. Here. It's about having the credibility. One book, I'm going to explain something to you right here. You're going to love this one. One yeah. book alone is is maybe, I'm going to say, almost $2 million, one book. And the reason yeah. for that is because it's not the, the money value that came from that individual book. Yeah. It allowed me to build my process and build myself up to earn more credibility, be on stages with top people yeah. in the world, and, yeah. and be able to coach people, you know, like Les Brown's daughter and a few other high-end people that I know. 
And mm -hmm. it's incredible the things that you can actually accomplish if you just keep moving forward and trudge through those hard times. When yeah. you go through those hard times, that's what the difference is. Yeah. Now I'm and debating on having a I'm debating on having a uh, a guest speaker. Uh, yeah. So whoever goes, like I said, there's surprises. I've always got surprises. He's always got something up his sleeve, everybody. Yeah, I do. Marianne you know saying next book, spiritual CEO. Contact Robert or Marianne. She's yeah. on Facebook as well. So if you want to contact her, she's on Facebook. So thank you, Marianne, for that information for people. That's awesome. October second, yeah. right? October second, yeah. Now that after that day, I'm going to be honest with you guys. After that yeah. day, if you do not come to that or purchase the the seat before that, like I said, it doesn't have to be at the event. You could actually do it online. Mm -hmm. So you just you just click the link there and, and it directs you right to it. Right to and, it. And the thing is, I'll never have this again. I don't. I won't have it again. I'm trying to do it to help people out because of COVID hit and people yeah. are struggling. Um, I do a lot of stuff like that. And I always mm -hmm. overgive and, you know, hey, I don't have to charge as much as I need to. Yeah, true enough. But you but the thing is, when you live to serve, when that is your purpose to serve people, there is no greater reward than doing just that. Yeah. And you well, live that. You people, live and breathe it. People focus on the wrong thing. I'm going to be honest with you. I used to focus on the money. Oh, man, you know. Mm -hmm scarcity how am i going to pay the bills how am i going to do this how am i going to pay that one there how am i going to eat how am yeah. I gonna, you know what stop it let's yeah. be honest let's be honest stop focusing on the money focus on the passion you have focus on what you're doing to empower other people focus on what your strengths are and and what you're going to do for business if you're if you're a publisher well yeah. then focus on the strengths there and, and show people give people a solution to the problem i'll guarantee you they'll come you know yeah. I mean, when, when people see there's a solution to the problem, they will come. And yeah. you know what? Absolutely. I give a lot away for free. I really do. I'll do videos. I'll give a lot away for free. I'll tell you the reason why. So someone else can host yeah. an event or someone else can do a video, and they're they're not giving it away for free. They're giving you so much for free, telling you what's going on. Then they say you can order it, at, but it'll take four to six weeks to get there. With right. me, you're getting the information right then and there. And you don't have to order it. So now when you, and you don't have to wait. Yeah. So imagine you get the information right there. But now imagine what happens when you hire me. Because you're getting that one for free that you're already believing in. Now imagine how much you get when you hire me. You're, you, you yeah. for instance, I mean, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's always, I'm always messaging him. Doodly loo. <laughs> okay. This is my problem funny. today. <laughs> it's funny because I'm always available somehow. Yes, that is very true. That is very true. So when you get mentored by Robert, then you send him a message. He always messages pretty quick back. Never have to wait. And then you you can follow through with whatever it is you're going through. And that's, so that's working with nice. me personally this year. I think mm -hmm. next year what I'm going to do is I'm going to hire people uh, to start doing the stuff. I'm going to train them yep. in position where they can they can actually uh, start working with the people and build yep. the business up bigger and bigger. So I'm I'm putting the platform together to do that. Mm -hmm. So I mean it takes time. It takes time. I mean my mm -hmm. business my business now is uh, went from 150 thousand dollars in debt to 1.8. So it's not bad. Wow. <laughs> it's not bad. I can only dream of that. <laughs> well, that's I'm going to get there. That's what I I'm going to get there. <laughs> I dreamt of it, but you got to remember the words. I can only dream of it. That's putting yourself backwards. You got to remember, yeah. never mind when you say I can get there, you know, it, people say, oh, I can't wait to get there. And that's still backwards. So you got to look at the wording. So if you really want to check out your wording, you really want to see what you're doing right or wrong, watch the movie The Secret. Watch the I movie. read the book, actually. Yeah. Well, a long time people, ago. most of the people from the movie The Secret, most of the people from Thick and Grow Rich and Napoleon Hill, they're basically they're, they're friends of mine, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I've wrote a few books with them. I, I've been on stages with a lot of them. You know, Kyle Wilson, Jim Rohn's ex-business partner, I've been on stage with him. Tony Robbins, been on stage with him. You know, Jack yeah. Canfield, Jack Canfield, a bunch of them. Yeah. A huge repertoire of people. Marianne says, really good at getting back to you. Absolutely. Yeah, you know. I agree, Marianne. 
So if you had one message for people that are wanting to move forward with either writing a book or going to the next level in their life, they're at kind of a crossroads and they're like, I don't know what to do. What would you, what would your best piece of advice There's a couple of things I'm going to say is you have to learn how to tell your story properly. And that's what I yeah. do. I teach people how to tell their story. I was taught by Ted McGrath, one of the top people out there to tell your story, a storyteller and that. And I teach people, it don't matter if you're selling a million dollar product, don't matter if you're selling bubble gum. I don't care. Mm -hmm. The point is, if yeah. you tell your story in a proper perspective, people are going to listen. People are going to say, wow. People are going to say, you want to get that wow out there. So yeah. you're going to encourage other people to go to you. Now, if you have your head underwater for mm -hmm. like two or three minutes, you're going to be wanting that air. You desperately want that air, right? Obviously. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a thing. So if you, if you want your dreams to come true, no matter what it is, you put yep. it from your head to your heart. And I call it the 18-inch rule. The reason why I call it that is because as soon as you put it from your head to your heart, you have that emotion behind it. When we have an emotion behind something, we're emotionally attached to something, we, mm -hmm. we work harder to get it. And I'll yep. tell you something. The more uncomfortable you are, the more gr growth you're going to have. Because Absolutely. You're, work, you're working on that un uncomfortableness, the feeling of it. But yep. you, as long as you have the right person guiding you through, I'm not going to say stay in that and then work it through yourself because it you're just banging your head against the wall. Yeah. 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 No, you need the right support, the right accountability and the right system in order for you to go to that next level. Don't go to a friend and sit there and be coached by a friend that's going to enable you. Mm -hmm. um, go to a person. I'm not going to say me, but I'm saying go to a person like me that is not afraid yeah. to be honest and tell you. you know I mean, I'm a straight shooter. If I yeah. feel you're doing something wrong and I know it's not going to work, well, I'm going to tell you. You're going to say, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I've been known Don't to do that. as it is. <laughs> no, I say it as it is. <laughs> I like that. I like that, though. Why, what's the point of sugarcoating things, right? I, I, remember go straight to the point. I remember the first time I told you as it was. I can't remember what the topic was or the situation was. But it's like your, your, your mouth dropped and it's like your jaw just went, huh? I don't think I've ever been talked to like that. <laughs> but it was, I don't do it intentionally to be rude. No, I don't, do it, I don't do it to criticize the person and degrade. No, them. I do no. it to teach them. Like here, here's what you gotta do. Yeah, I give exactly. them the pros and cons of it, basically. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly, and that's helpful. Says it as it is, footwork for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, if you want to get in touch with Robert, publishing, mentorship, whatever it is that you need, go to Facebook. He's on Facebook. I don't think. Are you on Instagram? You know what? Did you ever I'm, get there? I think I registered it years ago, and I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, LinkedIn, link, uh, what do you call it? Link, LinkedIn? I don't know how you say LinkedIn? That. LinkedIn. Yeah, say it right. It's funny. Um, <laughs> you can actually, if you're, if you're just not even on the Facebook or anything like that, you can just go to uh, uh, Magnetic Publishing 2017 at gmail.com. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for joining us on episode one of season two. <laughs> Thank you, Robert, for joining me today no and worries. telling us and sharing your story and being my first guest for this season. I appreciate it. Thank Always you very much. Thank Always. you, everybody. And we'll see you next time on What Has Changed Your Life. Cheers.